Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you how to make a sound reactive glowing wooden box. Moreover, we will get sounds reactivity, RGB light, Wi-Fi control from a smartphone or PC, touch control, many wonderful effects, light alarm clock, and more. Every time I have an idea, I always use prototyping tools, because it's much easier to make corrections or adjustments to the design. I find it's better to spend a few hours creating a model than to fail the project due to a mistake. For 3D prototyping, I found Onshape. It's a good app and free for personal use. So I tried to make this project easy to make and assemble. By the way, you can find the drawings and the necessary files at the link in the description below. Also, there you will find information about the materials that I used in the project. The first thing I will do is laser cut out the details needed for the frame. I will be using my homemade laser machine. You can also use a CNC router or simply order laser cutting from an online store. There are two nuances when assembling the sides. They should assemble in the arrangement you see now. The faces with the holes should be placed on top of each other. Also, if you look closely, 
you will notice that the joints have different heights. 3 mm corresponds to plywood, and 2.5 mm corresponds to sliced veneer that will be used for decoration, so you need to assemble 3 mm joints to the base. I'll be making an alchemy gothic style box this time, and the dark wood is perfect for that. Therefore, I decided to paint the back side black, so that it would not be visible through the decorative holes. In this project, I will use a WS2812 addressable lead strip with 60 diodes per 1 meter. This simple and very inexpensive lead strip is perfect for DIY projects. We will need 4 pieces of strip consisting of 27 diodes each. The strip can be easily cut along the cut line. We will also need a colored 3-core wire six pieces of about eight centimeters each, and one twice as long. It remains to strip the wire, tin the contacts, and solder the wires to the tape. I will solder like this, red is positive, blue is data, white is ground. As you can see, the strip has arrows on the marking. These arrows show the direction of how the signal will be transmitted, so I mark the wires that will be the input. This will facilitate further assembly. Now we need to glue the strip inside each of the boxes, around the perimeter. It's good that the tape already has a sticky base. Our faces are ready, we can attach them to the top and bottom base and glue the edges. I will use these small screws, 1.5 mm diameter and 5 mm length. If you don't have these on hand, you can easily use wood glue and toothpicks. Pass the wires through the hole. I don't like when wires break accidentally, so I will use a hot gun to fix them. Now we can glue the edges as well as the controller holder on the underside.
Before assembling all the electronic components, let's take a short overview of the circuit diagram. We have already soldered wires to the parts of the addressable strip. Now we just need to connect them together. We will supply 5 volts of power to the tape and to the controller through the USB-C connector. By the way, the ESP32 controller will be the core of our device. I chose the development board simply because it was at hand. You can use any other ESP32 controller. To control the LED strip, connect the blue wire with pin 2 of the controller and the data in of the strip. I also decided to add two touch buttons to control the glowing box. We can use them to turn on, off, select an effect, or other actions. The signal from the touch buttons will be transmitted to pins 12 and 14, and we will take the necessary 3.3 volts of power from the converter that is already on the controller board. Now the microphone. A little more wiring is needed here, but the principle is the same. Connect pins VDD and GND to the 3.3 volt supply on the controller. Also, SD pin with pin 33, WS pin with pin 25, SCK pin with pin 26, according to the scheme. Let's upload the firmware to the controller. Go to the wledinstall.github.io project and select ESP32 with Audio Reactive User Mod. Now is the time to connect the ESP32 controller to the USB port of your PC. Click Install. You should see your controller right here. Click Connect, then Install, and wait a bit. In most cases, this is a very quick and easy process. If you do not see your controller in the list to connect, you may need to install a driver. These procedures are well described on the WLED project pages. Next step, select your Wi-Fi network and enter the password. Now we can make adjustments according to our configuration. First, let's go to LED preferences. Set the number of diodes in our tape, 108, and set the port to which the tape is connected, the second. Color order is responsible for the order of colors used in your LED strip. Play with it if you find that the strip does not display the correct colors. Let's add touch buttons. Port 12 and 14. Button type is push inverted. Save settings. Go to user mod in order to configure the microphone. Enable audio reactive and set the parameters in accordance with our scheme. Microphone type must be generic, Y2S. Let's increase gain a little. Save settings. Before I dive into the world of soldering, I've got this quirky ritual. I give my soldering iron a pep talk and say, listen up pal, remember to suit up with heat shrink tubing. We've already got three kids, we don't need any more surprises. The length of the wires for the microphone and touch buttons I determine in place. If you are a big fan of using pine rosin instead of flux, do not forget to wash it off with alcohol after soldering, otherwise you risk corrosion of the contacts. But I really like pine rosin smell. Now I connecting and soldering power wires and ground. 
Let's check everything is working as intended. The controller and LED strip seem to be okay. Let's check the sound. And touch buttons. Now we can shrink the tubing with a hot airflow. For the decorative images in this project, I decided to experiment with Midjourney AI in the alchemy gothic style. Here you can see what I got after a certain number of attempts. Since I will be engraving these images at 300 dpi, they are not large enough. We need to upscale them. I have tried some online services, but finally found an app called Upscale. Look what a wonderful result after processing by this app. Next, I outlined in the vector editor the details that I'm going to cut out with a laser cutter. To be honest, I tried many options to optimize this part of the work, but unfortunately some elements are so small that after laser cutting they simply collapse. So I just outlined the main elements and drew small organic patterns by using the Curve app. By the way, it is not necessary to be very precise at high magnifications, as these details will not be noticeable. Now that all the layouts are prepared, it's time to start transferring them to the wood. For the light box, I use sliced cherry veneer as decorative wood. For dark box, American walnut, it has a charming aroma after burning. Engraving with a diode laser took the whole day. I'm very glad that I managed to finish it before dark, well, almost. I wasn't sure if you would want to watch a 10-hour video of the entire process, so I sped up the video as much as possible. By the way, engraved elements that are now poorly visible will appear after being covered with oil. We will need four of these frames. And finally, decoration for the top side. Last time I forgot to glue the corner elements. Let's quickly fix that. The first thing I'll start with is inserting decorative elements that act as a mask for the light source. These parts stay in place very tightly. I mark the side frames and the bottom side and secure them with masking tape. This will make it easier to glue them. For dark wood, I will use dark glue. It needs to be applied only along the edge of our frame. Then I secure the frame again with masking tape. and so on for each side.
Next, I secure everything with rope. The top edge consists of a sandwich, a base, a decorative element, and a frame. I just glue them together and fix them. After the glue has set, you can fix the microphone, touch buttons, and USB-C using hot glue. I fix the bottom side with screws, so I always have access to the electronic components. Today was a beautiful sunny day, so I took advantage of the natural light and covered the box with the oil outside. I'll use a mineral oil brush to get all the little nooks and crannies there. What a beautiful color this wood has after the oil. All that remains is to wait a little while the oil is absorbed into the wood and make the final tuning of the glowing box. Before starting tuning, I just want to mention that you can use WLED native mobile application for control this device. It's available for Android and iOS and has the same functionality as desktop app. Okay, let's add a red breathable effect first because it's perfect for the Gothic style. Save it with ID1. And let's add some more different effects. Rainbow, just for colors. And in some sound reactive effect. Next, just add following technical presets. Later, we will bind them to touch buttons. Now let's get everything in place. Here we define which preset will be activated when the glowing box just powered on. I will put ID 1 here. Next, for each of the buttons, we will set presets for short and long presses. This button will be used for on and off. Second button is the choice of the next effect or sound reactive effect when held for a long time. By the way, on the same page, you can configure which preset or effect will turn on depending on the time, which is very convenient in the evening or as an alarm clock in the morning. And finally, we are ready. Those who watch this video to the end have already realized that it is very easy to create a glowing box in your style. You just need to use your own design to decorate the sides. I hope you enjoyed this project. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. This will motivate me to create the next project.